Hey, be a squid and subscribe to my mediocrity. How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be doing the One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 actual review. Now I'm almost 100% positive you guys know how this is going to go. Like, I'm, I'm pretty confident you guys are aware of, of, of the situation. I've been very vocal over the past few years talking about how anime games have been booty and how they just haven't been really pumping out anything really that amazing. The only thing that I've ever really talked about in terms of an actually a good anime game, which it's not, I, it's an anime style type of game, but it's not necessarily based on an anime, and that's Damon X Machina. I thought the whole mech genre mixed up with some anime stuff was pretty fucking good, and I gave it a 9 out of 10, which, you know, is pretty good. Now, outside of Damon X Machina, though, pretty much everything else has been pretty trash. I will say Dragon Ball Z Kakarot was fucking good, but I'm so tired of seeing a Dragon Ball game based around the same story that it kind of just, you know, loses its uh, appeal to me. So, while I think the game is good in terms of visuals and the gameplay and whatnot, I just, you know, it's time to let Dragon Ball fucking just release into the void and come up with something new. Anyway, we're getting a little off track here. So back to Pirate Warriors 4, it's, it's been, it's been beautiful. It's been a wonderful experience. I really don't know what else to say. It's 10 out of 10 absolute fantastic. I mean, that's just what it is. The game is graphically beautiful. I can't even begin to understand why every anime game just doesn't have this kind of look to it. It, it, it's different from the other Dynasty Warrior games or Warriors Orochi games or Samurai Warriors game. I mean, if you guys are a fan of that series, you're going to really enjoy this. But for the most part, just in terms of visuals, it looks very different and very anime-esque, of course. But it, there's something about how they rendered everything and how they just kind of crafted these cutscenes and not to mention just when you're playing in-game. It's, it's so... It's so wild that it looks very different in comparison to what I'm used to from playing all these other games that are in the same format. I would like to uh, show you guys a quick cutscene which is something that by now you should have seen about Luffy vs Crocodile. If you haven't seen it, spoiler warning I guess even though that fight took place like six years ago or some shit but anyway I want you guys to see this so maybe you guys can get an idea as to how visually appealing this game is. I got it is it's, it's so it's beautiful boys it's goddamn beautiful that cutscene was kind of what really sold me in the first few hours of just playing through the main story and whatnot I, I was really just stunned by the amount of emotion that was conveyed within the cutscene which is a big part for me when it comes to anime because anime is an emotional thing for me it it has a lot of emotional ties getting me through hard times and whatnot and making me feel a lot of different types of emotions so whenever i see an in-game cutscene that actually can convey emotion to me and make me feel things that is how i know they did their job right on a cutscene and i mean that's me right like i'm not your average person i have deep ties to anime and there's reasons why i have an emotional attachment to cutscenes but to a regular person this is probably gonna blow your fucking mind because to me it blows my mind so to a person that isn't necessarily as as in depth as i am it definitely will probably surprise you to a certain degree. Now with that being said, I want to segue over to the combat, which is kind of what you would expect from kind of the Dynasty Warriors format sort of situation. It's very fast paced, mob clearing, sort of just insane combat where it's super exaggerated. You're this in incredible being that can do all sorts of different things, but 
What kind of really stands out for me when it comes to the combat in Pirate Warriors 4 versus, you know, Dynasty Warriors or Warriors Orochi or whatever, is the creativity that they had with a few different characters. Obviously, I haven't unlocked all the characters yet, but from the ones that I have played, there's a level of uniqueness to each individual character that kind of just really surprised me. For example, if you guys have seen my Trafalgar Law and Smoker video, those two playstyles are very, very different. Smoker is a sky type, which allows him to basically combo extremely well while being in the air, not to mention he's super mobile and so on and so on. And then Trafalgar Law is a technique type or technical type, or I, I forgot the word, but Anyway, his is basically just a lot of mob clear AoE type of stuff. He's not necessarily a, you know, 1v1 type of guy. Keep in mind, the game is based around mob clearing anyway, so anybody can 1v1, but I mean, like, there are certain characters that do it better. Point being, though, Trafalgar Law, his combos are very unique because you create a bubble room which allows you to do whatever you want. He can do anything in that room. So you can be outside the bubble 10 feet away and you, as long as you're slashing the air, it's happening in that little bubble area, which is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's very creative and very uh, kind of back and forth with the anime because that's what he can do in the actual show. So I'm glad they got creative with his power and were able to do something a little bit more in depth than just, uh, you know, I dash around with this sword and kill people, you know, that, that's kind of boring. Which, you know, in comparison to Dynasty Warriors or Warriors Orochi, there's not really anything kind of like that at all, which is why I'm, I'm really just happy that he stands out in comparison to some of the other characters and also in comparison to the other game. So I just kind of want to summarize the combat here for each individual character. It's essentially high flying, super speed, uh, mob clearing monsters. That's, that's basically the entire game in a nutshell. You're just going to be dashing around everywhere, continuing combos, killing a thousand people in less than five seconds, and no, I'm not kidding, that's genuinely how the game is built, and that's how it's supposed to be. If there was ever a game that fits the anime genre, it is definitely the Dynasty Warriors, Warriors Orochi uh, format, because that that's anime in a nutshell right there. It's just these super crazy, broken, OP characters with amazing powers and skills and they can do what is happening in this video game so it kind of blends extremely well together so i think this format is absolutely fantastic and just as a heads up i wouldn't mind seeing a my hero academia game like this or you know anything else now let's go ahead and slide on over to what's available content wise so i think pirate warriors 4 has done an extremely good job at separating what you can do in the game via you have the main storyline which you play through the story of whoever depending on you know the mission so the alabaster uh you know arc or, what, or whatever you would play as luffy zoro sanji those characters mainly and then as you're progressing you can choose between these characters and i think for uh pirate warriors 4 i think crocodile is a good starting point even though i'm pretty sure this is just kind of like recap type of situation but nonetheless you get the idea and then you have the the same thing but it's more of a free play so you can play through the main story but you can actually play as whoever you want so if you wanted to play the alabaster arc as a smoker or something you could do that so i think they did a good job at separating these two things because i when i first was playing through it i was like oh man this kind of sucks i wish i could play uh you know fucking trafalgar law over luffy and i was like oh shit i fucking can so i really appreciate the fact that they took the time to separate each of these things and allow me to have the freedom to play whoever i want and if i wanted to have the actual you know one piece experience that option is there for me as well and then you have the treasure arc which allows you to go farming for you know treasure the the coins to upgrade your skills you can also free play as any of the characters that you've unlocked from the story mode or you can unlock characters via the treasure arc as well one of the characters i think you have to uh, unlock via the treasure arcs are the um is buggy uh he's pretty fun by the way buggy's really cool um so there's a few different characters that you can unlock via that and I think, again, it's another separated, you know, piece of content that I think is good because if it was just the story, that probably would get stale and boring for me for a while. So if I ever get tired of the story and I'm like, eh, I want to change off this, I have the treasure arc that I can mess around with as well. And it's not no bullshit cheap ass thing either. There's like three different arcs from the East Blue Grand Line and then there's a third one that I forgot the name of. But 
Either way, there's a variety of treasure arcs that you can go through, and they're pretty lengthy. Just to get through the entire first one, it took me roughly about two to three hours, so you're going to have a pretty, a pretty steady flow of content for a while. I would also like to point out that unlocking characters, as well as the progression via the story and whatnot, is actually pretty steady, and you feel like you're getting somewhere. Sometimes, you know, when I play a Dynasty Warriors game or a Rochi game, I kind of feel like it's a bit stale and, you know, I'm just kind of mindlessly doing missions, but I think the help of the cutscenes as well as getting unlocks after basically every mission is, is pretty damn good. I really feel like I'm progressing through something rather than just going through the motions and that I have something to look forward to. Not to mention that you can check your challenges via the main screen before you go into a mission so you can see who exactly you're going to unlock or who you can unlock and you can see what the requirements are which I think is really helpful. When it comes to the progression system I think they found the sweet spot for it where it's not too short, it's not too lengthy, it's kind of found that nice little middle ground where you can actually feel like you're getting something for not ever breaking your brain or feeling burnt out on the amount of progressing that you feel like you're doing. Also as a little kind of side note for progression, you kind of have this thing called a growth map which allows you to level up your characters and e each character has their own individual growth map so you can kind of personalize them a little bit better giving them extra skills. Uh, you can also change up their move sets and whatnot so I think the growth map was a nice little added detail which allows you to once again feel that decent bit of progression. There are going to be three growth maps. The first one is going to be for all characters so it basically just gives you extra statistics and whatnot like health, defense, stamina. Uh, I'm actually going to talk about stamina here in a second and also power. So those are going to be the main thing that you're going to want to level up first because it's going to be for all characters. And then you have two and three, which is going to be the individual growth map for a certain character. So if you pick Smoker, he's going to have the first one, which is for everyone. And then he's going to have his own personal two uh, growth maps, which the second one is typically going to be like extra skills and uh, powers that he'll have. And the third one is just going to be extra statistics like... I said earlier with you know power stamina all that stuff and it doesn't take forever to fill these spots either they're, they're pretty quick i was able to fill up majority of my first one and all of trafalgar laws in under like two hours so that felt really good and it wasn't like a serious grind or anything like that it was actually pretty steady and i felt comfortable with it now as i mentioned earlier stamina is now a thing in this game and for people that are from the warriors sagas and stuff like that you guys would know Stamina has never been really a thing in those types of games and to have it in this one is a little wonky and kind of feels weird and it adds kind of a little bit of micromanagement as well but I don't necessarily mind it I think it actually kind of adds a little bit of flavor so it's not necessarily too bad does this game need it no do I like it Kinda, so I don't know, it's different. I think it's a nice little change of flavor. Now let's just go ahead and close out this review, boys. Let me go ahead and say this. I've been waiting a good and long time to play a decent anime game that both conveys passion, emotion, a lot of great and fun combat, not to mention visually pleasing, and Pirate Warriors 4 checks all those boxes. I'm happy to say that this is a 10 out of 10 experience. If you are an anime fan, a One Piece fan, this game is going to be right up your alley. The beautifully crafted cutscenes, the amazing high flying combat, not to mention just the absolute beautiful design of the game. I mean, you, you you're gonna you're gonna be happy. You're gonna be happy, and also people that may or may not be you know necessarily anime fans but you're a fan of the warriors format I, I still think this is something you should check out because i think the unique character designs and how the combat flows together with each individual character and how unique they are in comparison to some of the other warriors games i think that would probably pique your interest if anything else not to say that the other warriors games don't have good combat or anything like that but a lot of the times I kind of felt like they just did the same thing, you know, and it, 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 it's not bad by any degree because that game, there's only so much you can do, but it feels like they really stepped it up with Pirate Warriors 4. So if you really like the combat in the other Warriors games, this one is going to make you happy because they really played it up on this one. And that should conclude everything, boys. This game is a fucking 10 out of 10, possibly my game of the year. So. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of 2020, but so far, Pirate Warriors 4 is leading it for me. But that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.